Hey, what's up guys, Metal 571 here, and today we're going to be talking about the Audio-Technica ATH M40X. I talked about the M50X in a previous review, if you haven't already seen that. Not my favorite headphone, usually I would recommend the M40X over it, so we're going to talk about the M40X some more in this review. I actually also owned this headphone as my daily driver way early in the hobby, I'd say about five years ago, so that would be, what, 2014, something like that. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with it. I don't know why it took so long to get around to reviewing it, but finally I am. And uh, a little shout out here to Stuart Black from HomeStudioBasics.com. This is his pair that he sent me for review. So let's get right into it. What is this? This is a $100 closed back 35 ohm, 98 decibel per milliwatt sensitivity, 40 millimeter dynamic driver headphone. But what that basically means is it'll run off of everything and it's closed back so it'll isolate to a decent degree. You just can't blast it like maybe you could with an IEM around other people. So the sound, the bass. Okay, this is a bassy headphone. There's a significant boost at 150 hertz approximately. So in the mid bass to upper bass kind of transition area. So you get quite a boomy sound coming out of it. And below the 150 hertz, you're rolling off significantly. You do get some sub bass here, but it sounds distorted harmonically. So it's not very clean. And uh, if you crank it up, it'll probably break up quite a bit. Um, so even though you can run a side sweep and it will produce frequencies down to 30 hertz or below, um, you're still rolling off a lot at that point, meaning that the decibel level is a lot lower. And unfortunately, it's also not very clean. So, not the best. I was surprised actually how much bass there is in this headphone. Um, I don't remember it being that bassy, but that's probably because I have no idea what a neutral sound was supposed to be back then, or at least what my idea of neutral was, was not quite right. Um, so that's what the bass is like. I didn't have any other complaints about it. It just doesn't extend that well. You can you can fix this to a decent degree with EQ, thankfully. Um, but yeah, it's not the cleanest bass in the world, and it's quite quite mid bassy, very mid bassy actually. Uh, without it, uh, the mid range you've got a significant again broad dip this time at around somewhere around 500 hertz. So you've got this dip from maybe like 300 to 700, something like that hertz. Yes, it sounds like I'm describing a frequency response graph, but that's actually what it sounds like too. So that sucks out a lot of the low mid-range by default, um, which will eliminate a lot of, not eliminate, but significantly reduce the lower notes of, uh, of voices. So voices sound kind of lacking in body because of this. Uh, I, I, to my ears, about 4 dB uh, dip here. So you've got this like, hump at 150 hertz and you follow it immediately by this dip at the low mids and it sounds really off um not the best thankfully though and this is why i used to love this headphone actually i still do like it over the m50x is the upper mid range has really almost no coloration to my ears i really like the upper mids some people will find the upper mids a little bit too late back um, but at least they aren't spiky in random areas with huge grain like the M50X has at around 4K, I believe is what I said in my original review. That thing always annoyed me in the mid-range. There's always something wrong with it. This one is a lot more accurate sounding in the upper mids. The low mids are, again, sucked out. I think that was the same problem with the M50X, but the M50X had much lumpier bass response, meaning... It was dip and then and then a peak and then a dip and a peak and it's just it's almost impossible to EQ it to sound normal. <laughs> but this one you can sort of eliminate a simple mid bass hump and you can boost the low mids to get them back to where they probably should be. Also, this sounded a little bit less grainy. A lot of this review I'm going to be talking about the Creative Arvana Live as well as a comparison point. Uh, which I've previously reviewed as well, which is a cheaper headphone. It runs around, I don't know, nowadays it's a little bit more expensive because it's harder to get because, uh, of course, our favorite friend Z Reviews reviewed this thing and gave it a rave review, as he should have, because it's a fantastic value and uh, I would argue maybe a better value than the M40X, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, the upper mid-range, though, my point was is a little bit less grainy, I think, on the M40X as well. The detail is a little bit better. The Cal, which is what the Creative Arvana Live is commonly known as in the community, 
is a little bit hazier in the mids. That's just kind of how it is. It's also a lot more aggressive, but that can be tamed a little bit with EQ. Now the treble is where things again have a, an extremely obvious peak at around 10K, 11K, 9K, depending on where your ears perceive it. So you've got this mid treble peak that's around four decibels um, to my ears again. So that makes this headphone quite a V-shaped headphone. I don't remember it being such a V-shaped headphone. I was always like, oh yeah, if you want a more neutral headphone, get the M40X instead of the M50X. That's not really the case. Um, both headphones are quite colored, actually. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm spoiled from listening to all these. You know, I've been reviewing multi-thousand dollar headphones recently, so this is may, might sound a little bit harsh on this headphone, but we'll we'll talk about why because the cal exists it's part of the reason why but so the treble here is still has an annoying mid treble peak and uh, you can reduce it it mostly responds great to eq not really a problem honestly but it is a little bit metallic in timbre um, after you reduce the peak so it's not perfect but as such as the nature of eq you can't fix everything um, but not too bad um, however, <laughs> when we get to the sound stage, this is the smallest sound stage I have ever heard in a headphone bar none. It's actually what I wrote in my notes that I'm referring to on the screen here. It is so bad. Um, now, some people probably have no idea what soundstage even is, so it doesn't even gonna, not even going to matter to you. But if you're wondering, compared to other headphones, this has such a closed-in uh, soundstage, and that's always been the case, really. The M40X and the M50X are very, very intimate. So intimate. This intimate is being nice to them. They're just, there's none. There's so little stereo separation on these um, in terms of instruments that it's kind of surprising and shocking coming from <laughs> me listening to open backs all the time. Not surprising, but again this is a significant drawback of soundstage is really important to you so it's important to mention in fact even the cal had a better soundstage on it and this is not known for having a really large stage at all because it doesn't but there is at least some amount of separation going on a little bit uh, when you're listening to really well recorded music with a nicely placed instruments but yeah it's just not there on the audio technica um so now i'm going to talk about some other stuff here that uh especially regarding pads and you guys probably knew this was coming <laughs> now the comfort with the stock pads is just okay it's not the best um it's better than i remember actually i didn't hate it that much uh, but it's definitely a little shallow and um the pads are a little bit too small for my ears it might not matter at all if you have smaller ears uh, mine are slightly larger than average uh, so a lot of people try to solve this by purchasing something like this. These are the Brainwaves flat pleather pads. And I also have, just for this review, <laughs> the Brainwaves angled pleather pads. These are very, very, very commonly purchased with the M40X and the M50X. And what I've done is I've gone and measured the stock pads and then I've measured these pads, both the flat and the angled. And I've overlaid them all in one graph for the left channel. And you can find that in the description below. Um, I've measured the headphone so that you can see what it looks like on the mini DSP ears. Now, this is not by any means an IEC compliant uh, headphone measurement system or anywhere near comparable to a head and torso simulator. Those also cost something like 20 plus thousand dollars. And so I don't think... <laughs> You can get everything out of the mini DSP ears, but it does give you an idea of what I'm about to describe here. Now, one of the big things that gets recommended is that you just change out the pads. And the most important thing to know about changing the pads on the headphone is the sound almost always changes, and it almost always changes for the worse. And that is pretty much what happens here. Now, I did try to like these with uh, these pads installed. And yes, so those who have already done this before, you're gonna ask if I used the foam behind the original M40X pads. Yes, I put that in here. So all those measurements, measurements were made with the foam that comes in the M40X. This foam in here is actually, I'm sorry, in here is actually an insert behind the, 
actually you're not looking at it directly but anyway there's a foam insert behind the pad itself so you usually put that in here before you install the pad anyway so what happens when you try to use these larger pads is yes it does get more comfortable but you also destroy the base and by destroy i mean <laughs> it really goes way out of control uh, on frequency response target. Uh, you've got an even larger bass boost. Now it's shifted a little bit more toward the sub bass though, which you can see on the plots there. Um, but you also get this horrible like five plus, maybe more like seven or eight dB dip at 200 Hertz that just destroys the, the, the upper bass. It's just not there. Followed by an unusually forward 500 to 1K region. Um, however, I think the treble is a little bit more neutral than the stock. Uh, it's not quite as peaky. It's a little exaggerated of an effect on the ears measurements with those custom pads. But, And I'll be fair, I thought the treble detail was actually slightly better while using the Brainwaves pads. I was surprised by that. Um, and I don't think the soundstage actually changed that much. Maybe it got a little bit bigger, but... It's still not a very good soundstage. And so at this point, now you've spent $100 on this and you've spent something like $30 or more. Some of the sheepskin version of these can go for like 40. And now you could have spent that money on an AKG K553 probably. <laughs> and so it gets difficult to justify um, this headphone and then buying those pads. I'm not gonna say you shouldn't ever do it. Go ahead, you can experiment, especially people who are watching this probably are looking for maybe their first headphone. And so if you want to experiment, I'm not gonna, I can't stop you, that's impossible. But I, want to, I wanted to explain exactly what happens to the sound. It seems like nobody cares about that. They just swap the pad because it, you know, is more comfortable, which I, I understand, but it's important to know that the sound's gonna change when you, because especially because when you use these pads, you've got a much larger chamber now um, than the stock pad, which is much shallower. And so when you change that, you know, f the size of the region that is sealed to your ear, it's going to do a lot of weird stuff to the sound that the original designers of the headphone did not intend. And that's how things work. <laughs> so that's what happens with the pads. I'm not a fan of these custom pads. They are way more comfortable, but the sound quality to me does not make sense to be switching to. You might disagree, that's fine. But that's what I think about that. So in conclusion here, um, if the, if the, unless the headphone has to fold, because that is nice, uh, and it does have a removable cable, which is incredibly nice at this price point. Apparently I can't even figure out where it is. Here's one end of it. <laughs> it comes with a coiled and a straight cable, actually. <sighs> Yes, yeah, I think it comes with both, but you can you can find that out yourself. This is mostly a sound review. Um, but the problem is that even though those features exist, um, the sound quality of the Arvana Live is much, much, much more normal sounding without any EQ at all. Um, it's just a slightly warm headphone with slightly forward mids and slightly forward mid treble. Whereas the M40X is a headphone that's got this large 150 hertz boost, then a large dip in the low mids, and then another large mid treble boost. And so it's very V-shaped by comparison. So is the Cal, it's a little bit V-shaped, but it's, I would definitely pick it because it also costs less, like 70 or 80 bucks, I think at the most usually. And the M40X is almost always a hundred bucks. So that's my take on the M40X. I think I'd still take it over the M50X if I had to buy an Audio-Technica, but to be honest, the Cal is just a better sounding headphone for frequency response wise, soundstage wise. Now also another consideration I want to mention was the comfort of the Creative Art Vinyl Live. Also not the best, also somewhat small pads. And if you change the pads on this, I will not be happy. <laughs> Actually I have no idea, I've not swapped them, but hopefully someone out there will measure that. And, and show what happens to the frequency response. I'm sure it's pretty weird. So there you go, guys. That's a full comprehensive sound review of the Audio-Technica ATHM 40X. I think there's better options on the market now, but five years ago, this was really one of the better, the better options uh, under $100. But now I think there's some, there's there's some more stuff going on in the market. Now, other stuff I haven't talked about. Techstar Pro 82. Somebody brought up the other day to me. I haven't heard that yet either. It might be pretty good. No idea, but uh, I guess we'll see in the future. So there you go, guys. That's the M40X, and uh, I'll see you in the next review.